<laughs> All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, arthropods today. Um, these are animals that are considered upside down and inside out in comparison to ourselves. What do I mean by that? Well, your skeleton is on the inside of your body, right? And so is, and your nervous system is on your back and your heart is on your front side. Well, in regards to arthropods, they have a skeleton that's on their outside. We call it an exoskeleton. So they have an exoskeleton and the muscles are on the inside. Their nervous system is actually on their front side, on their stomach and ventral side is what we would call it. And their heart is actually on their back side. So they're upside down and inside out in comparison to us. <clears throat> so arthropods are obviously these armored exoskeleton animals and they are really cool. Let me go back to this previous picture. I was just hoping to get, take off that top screen. Anyway, they're also the most abundant of animals too, easily one of the most successful animals. Two thirds of all the named species are some type of arthropod. And 80% of these arthropods are actually insects. And remember, insects have six legs. So there are, at one time or another, quintillion insects that are alive at any one time. If you were just to weigh all the ants, for instance, they would weigh as much as all the people on Earth. So they're extremely abundant. Now, these are the major groups of insects. 36% of them are beetles, 12% are flies, 12% are butterflies or moths, 10% are bees or wasps, and then 8% are other types of insects you might see running around like cockroaches and grasshoppers. So you can see that the beetles are an extremely successful group of animals. Now there's also crustaceans. Those are mostly things like our lobsters and our, um, hang on a second. I'm gonna pause the record. All right, so they're really cool animals. Let's go back to a little bit. Can you stop banging that, whoever's doing that? I'm all flustered. Playing with my emotions. I hate that. Okay, so arthropods and insects are really cool. We got these crustaceans like our, our crabs, our lobsters, just about anything you see running around that looks kind of armored like is crustacean. You see spiders. And then of course you see all these other types of arthropods like roly polies are a type of arthropod too. So these are extremely successful animals, meaning that there's a bunch of them. There's lots of diversity of species. I mean, you could argue God must really love beetles because there's hundreds of thousands of different species of beetles. Oops. Okay. Um, so again, they have a rigid exoskeleton. Um, and the thing though is this kind of limits their body size. So you're probably not gonna see an insect ever except in movies that are gonna be the size of Godzilla because their bodies become so heavy that there's, the skeleton limits that and, and, and it's brittleness. And so <laughs> they can't get to these enormous sizes. Also, they don't really have lungs. They usually have air tubes and things like that or gills that help supply oxygen to their muscles. And so there's again a limitation on all of this. Please don't hit the pennies or whatever that is. Okay, so here's the basic body plan of most insects. You can see that there's a head, a thorax and an abdomen. And the thorax is where you'll find the wings on insects as well as the leg. So everything that's related to motor movements, the big movement anyway, the jumping around and climbing is gonna be related to the thorax. The abdomen obviously is gonna be where their reproductive parts are, their digestive system, their kidneys and so forth. And then of course the head actually has a little brain in there. 
Um, they call them mushroom bodies that help them to learn a little bit and, and then do all these complex behaviors. A lot of them are called fixed action patterns. You might remember that from when we talked about behavior, which will cause them to do a certain activity over and over again. <clears throat> Their antenna is meant just to be kind of like feelers. And then they also can smell perfumes and pheromones and other insects and odors that are around. <laughs> they can also hear through their arms. There'll be little membranes that'll move around this like ear. So insects do all sorts of cool things and other arthropods as well. Here's the body plan of a honeybee. Again, you can see the legs are on the thorax. So they again, they'll have six legs. There's three on one side and three on the other. So we're only seeing three on this picture here. Then of course you have your head and then you have your abdominal area. And inside you can look in and you'll see the digestive system. And then you'll see these air sacs. Because remember they have little holes along the side of their body called spiracles that allow air to come in. And then they have these malpigian tubules that are floating around. They're like the kidneys for the insect. <clears throat> so again, it's a really cool body plan. Now let's talk about glycerates. <clears throat> glycerates are arthropods that don't have true jaws or mandibles. And believe it or not, these are some pretty cool animals. Yeah. A lot of these include our spiders. So they might have something that has fangs and stuff like that, but it's not the typical jaws that you see like on an ant that can crush through uh, seeds and stuff like that. Um, you can see also that mandibulates don't typically have the big eyes that you'll see like on an insect. They'll have lots of little dot eyes like you see on a spider. So they might have eight or so eyes, a spider. While a insect like this ant will have a multifaceted eye where the eye is made up of multiple, it's not just like us having an eyeball, but actually having lots of little facets all coming together to make a compound eye is what they would call it. So here's a jumping spider on the left and a bullfrog ant on the right. And the thing is, is when you see an ant, you know how you just see an ant running around on the ground and you see another ant? <clears throat> you might think they all kind of look the same, but if you actually got a microscope and really study them, you'll see that they're really diverse. Some might have little horns on them like rhinos. There's just all sorts of amazing diversity that goes on if you can really get at the microscopic level of these insects. Now, arachnids are um, the largest group of glycerates. So which ones are those? You know what the word arachnid would probably represent. What group of animals? Spiders. Yep, spiders, good. 57,000 are named species of spiders. They're largely terrestrial, meaning they live on land. But these not only include spiders, but they also include ticks, mites, and scorpions. So arachnids include spiders, ticks, mites, and scorpions. And of course, some of them can be poisonous. Here's our black widow, for instance. Um, if you see a little a, a black spider with a red dot on it, you know that that's most likely a black widow. Or over here, we have our brown recluse, which I don't know if you see them up here in Illinois, but just a little bit further south in the, or southern Illinois, you definitely will see them. And what you'll see, though, if you really want to look and see what a, a brown recluse is, Look on the back of the, you notice there's a violin-like structure on it. That's, you know, see the violin, here's the, or the guitar. Here's the handle over here. And then this is where the instrument would be played. Does that make sense? That's how you know it's a brown recluse. So you see a brown spider with that violin-like structure on its back, then you're dealing with a brown recluse. Yeah, they'll play it with a little bit of webbing. Yeah, they got some webbing between it. Did you ask the question of him? Are they what now? More prevalent? Oh, there's a different type. Uh, brown recluses, I think, tend to 
if they bite you, they can cause some rotting to occur in that area and really damage your muscle in that spot. They cause a hole. Um, but I'm not sure which one would be more venomous off the top of my head, to be honest with you. That might be something to dig around a little bit. In. Actually, most spiders are at least not that poisonous to us. But these are, of course. And then there's some in Australia that are very poisonous as well. But I'm not familiar with every type. Exactly. They're more, they're about, uh, um, yeah, to, to knock out, yeah, to knock out those insects. Now, here's a crustacean. Obviously, you've seen these at least as crayfish or crawdads or crawfish or, um, <clears throat> you can find these around here, right? Has anybody found any around ponds and mucky areas? Now, notice that their thorax, it's called a cephalothorax. Everybody see that? Here's a cephalothorax. So that's where their arms and legs are located. Why they call it cephalothorax? It means it's their head and their body. So that's a cephalothorax. And then you got your abdomen and your spinnerets. And so they'll lay their eggs in underneath their spinner, spinnerets and that's where the mother will guard them over time. And so they hatch. Um, obviously they tend to, they have uh, <clears throat> gills and stuff like that to help breathe. So anyway, those are our crustaceans. And of course, you, what other crustaceans would be out there? Well, there'd be lobsters and, and crabs and stuff like that. Here's the three different types. One group is a decapod. Has anybody ever watched Moana? She says, and she even refers to herself, to, even refers to himself as a decapod. And then he says, look it up. Remember that in the song? I'm so shiny. <laughs> yes. Anybody want to? Yes. Okay, we'll take a, a break yes. and we'll find out about our decapod. Yes. Articles. I love that word. <laughs> All right, so let's look at our decapods. Decapods, got it. Yep, look it up. Crusty. Look it up, guys. So here's our decapods. These are our crabs, our shrimps, and our lobsters. So I think at least you'll remember a decapod from here on out. Yeah, I sure will. I will. I will never forget that one. And what does deca mean? Ten. Ten. So look, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you count the claws, nine, 10, right? One, five on each side. So, so that's right, 10 feet, pods, 10 feet. And then we got your roly pulleys. Anybody ever seen the roly pulley? In other places, they're called pill bugs and sow bugs. These are terrestrial crustaceans. So those are also crustaceans and believe it or not this barnacles are also crustaceans and are sessile as adults meaning they don't move around as adults they just sit there and they'll filter feed and do all that kind of stuff but these are also a type of crustacean then we have our millipedes and our centipedes and then our millipedes are a little different they actually have two pairs of legs on each body segment. So each body segment has two legs. While centipedes have one pair of legs on each body segment. So that's the big difference between centipedes and millipedes is the number of legs per segment. Uh, they are, the uh, centipedes are often uh, carnivores. So they'll run around trying to eat something while millipedes are typically herbivores, so they'll eat plants. Now that brings us to the biggest group of arthropods by far, and those are insects. There's over a million different species of insects, but the most prevalent ones include our beetles, our honeybees and ants, um, I guess fleas to, to lesser extent, um, but butterflies and moths, as well as grasshoppers and dragonflies. Those are kind of the ones that stand out probably to most people. 
The beetles, they call them the big four, but the honeybees and ants are a order called Hymenoptera. We've got der moths and butterflies. Those are Lepidoptera. That's what we call the orders. And beetles, we have our Coleoptera. So those are the big orders. They go through what they call complete metamorphosis. So it'll be like a larvae or a, a maggot or something like that. And they need to become a fly. If it's a maggot, they'll become a fly. Or um, if it's a caterpillar, it'll become a moth or a butterfly. So it does all sorts of really cool things like that. Again, they have three body sections. The head can have all sorts of crazy mouth parts. Here's different flies where they got these, or butterflies or whatever, or they'll have like several different parts of it. Like in the case of this mosquito, it might help them to drink your blood or if it's a butterfly, it'll drink the nectar or lap up um, food from uh, poop if it's a, 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 a fly or house fly. Or they might have chewing mouth parts like you see on ants. Again, the thorax is where you find the legs and the wings if they happen to have wings. And then their abdomen can be up to 12 segments. So eight to 12 segments is kind of typical for insects. They'll have eight to 12 body segments. The thorax is actually made up of three segments. And then the head is actually kind of a fused of three or four or five segments or something like that evolutionarily. Now here's how the muscles are attached on the inside of the body of an arthropod. You'll see that the muscles pull on the shells of the arthropod. The heart will be at the top and the nervous system will be on the bottom. And so throughout, you know, have you probably broken up a crab leg and eaten the muscles inside it? Um, you can see how the muscles are attached to the shell somewhat. You know, of course, after it's cooked, it peels off. So exoskeletons made aquatic arthropods excellent candidates for, inv for invading terrestrial environments because it's a shell that can kind of hold that water together. So again, the major four arthropod phylum are crustaceans, which are crabs and lobsters and stuff like that. Hexapods, which are insects, hexa meaning six, six feet. And then we have our glycerates, which include our scorpions and stuff like that. And then our mirapods, which are like our uh, roly polies and things like that. So arthropods are the dominant animals on earth in regards to species, particularly terrestrial part of land. There's 1.5 million described species. So that's amazing to think about it. Okay, so the, anyway, that's kind of the general gist of some of the body parts. Uh, here's our crustaceans again. Um, you'll see that the larvae are a lot different. This is what the larvae look like at the bottom. Um, it, you wouldn't even know that was a crustacean's larvae, but it'll look like this weird little animal at the bottom, and then it'll grow up to be this uh, lobster, for instance. We've already talked about the cephalothorax, and that's where the appendages are located. Um, here is more of the crustaceans. So let me take another little mental break for you guys. Again. All right, so the, uh, here's our, again, our, we've already talked about this a little bit. I think you got some ideas. Um, the crustacean larvae is called a nopolis and so forth. Here's our barnacles down at the bottom. Here's a larvae of that that's up at the top or different species, I believe. Um, and then here's our insects. They were found more than 400 million years ago in the Devonian period. The uh, insects are again part of the phylum Hexapodia. And then uh, there's different orders of insects. But again, that represents the six legs. And we estimate there's been over, or there has been 1.4 million species described. So that might just be a small fraction of the total number of insects that live on Earth. So they've been incredibly successful. 
Again, their body segments kind of look like this. They got their head region, their thorax, which is going to have the two pairs of wings on it. So there's actually three body segments. So the last two segments of the arthropods, thorax has the wings. And each segment of the thorax has a pair of legs. So it's called the prothorax, the metathorax, or excuse me, the prothorax, the mesothorax, and the metathorax. Those are the three parts of the thorax of insects. So the prothorax will have legs, and then the mesothorax and the metathorax will have wings and legs. And then if you look at the body on this insect, you'll see that the heart is called the dorsal circulatory vessels. It's kind of like a heart or analogous to a heart that's on the top of its back. And the nerves are actually on the ventral side. And so the, you got the brain and then you got the nerves and then you got your mouth that goes to a gut. And then you have the hind gut. And then of course it, there's excretions. There's no uh, urinary system per se. It all goes out the anus. So their poop and their pee go out the same hole. And they do so by using these malpigian tubules that are called excretory organs here. Now remember they're breathing through air tubes called trachea. And that sends the air into the muscles directly. Now the simplest of insects for the most part are called, are in the class Apaterigota, which are basically these wingless insects. So these are the insects that evolutionarily never really had wings. And these include these things like they're called Columbians. That's what are these things are right here you're looking at. You might have seen silverfish. You often would find them in your bathtub accidentally. Those are those weird little insects with lots of little hairs that come off. Um, yeah, they're nasty, kind of weird looking. I've seen them before, but you don't see them very often. But they have a very simple lifestyle and they look like small adults. So they don't go through a complete metamorphosis. Now the winged insects are called pterygota. So these are most of the rest of the insects that we'll talk about. Even ants have wings if you talk about the queens and the and so forth. Uh, but for the most part, um, we're going to talk about these insects that have these different instars, these different molts. Is everybody familiar with instars, gals? Um, insects have these instars. Everybody paying attention? So you got your caterpillar. It hatches from an egg. Ever seen this, the baby caterpillar? It hatches from an egg, becomes a first instar caterpillar, eats and eats and eats, molts by getting rid of its old skin. It's called cuticle and becomes the second instar. And then it'll eat, 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 expand its cuticle, then remove its old skin, eat it, and then grow some more until it gets to the fourth or fifth or sixth instar where it'll become a pupa, go through what they call a complete metamorphosis and become a butterfly or a moth or whatever. So a complete metamorphosis allows an animal to go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And you think about it from an evolutionary perspective, it's allowing it to take advantage of all sorts of different habitats and food types. It can be a chewing insect that's eating the leaves of a plant and then go off and eat nectar and be reproductive and fly around finding each other, getting it on, so to speak, as butterflies and moths. So they can do all sorts of neat things because they can go through this complete metamorphosis. Now, there are some insects that don't go through metamorphosis or they go through an incomplete one like a grasshopper or a cockroach. Those insects will be, a baby cockroach looks like the adult cockroach that was smaller wings, for instance. We call that incomplete or, for the most part, metamorphosis. It's not really a real metamorphosis. It's those butterflies, those ants, those houseflies. Those are all that go through complete metamorphosis, where they go through these multiple instars. Now, the other ones will go through stages and instars, too, but, um, and so forth. Now there's 29 different orders of insects. So that's a lot actually. Um, the ones that you'll 
again, we'll probably focus on are the major four like hymenopteras and lepidopteras and so forth. Now, the, one of the big advances in evolution of insects is the ability to fold the wings back. So a primitive insect would be a dragonfly. Remember how dragonflies have their wings straight out? They can't fold them back. So that's kind of what the early evolutionary style body plan was like. That insects evolved the ability to move their wings back and now they can go into little holes, holes and hide out. So that's a big advantage to be able to do those kind of things. So these are all major changes in the evolution of insects where they went from incomplete metamorphosis and then they evolved the ability, some groups to go through a complete metamorphosis. So Odonata is our dragonflies and our damselflies. So damselflies and dragonflies are closely related. Damselflies can kind of move their wings back a little bit more than dragonflies. They do go through a pretty major change in their body plan. Because remember when they're, they're larvae, they'll run around eating insects and little fish in the water as dragonfly larvae. And then they'll come out and eat mosquitoes flying around. So they can go through some pretty amazing changes in their body plan. Um, here's some of the different orders of insects. You have your Orthoptera, which are our grasshoppers, our crickets, our cockroaches. So you think grasshoppers and cockroaches are more closely related to one another. And then we have our Isoopteras, which are our termites. Um, and then we have Plecoopteras, which is our stoneflies. And then we have our earwigs and thrips. Hemipteras are insects that have true mouth parts that can uh, stab their food. And then we have Homoptera, which also have a piercing sucking mouth part, like aphids and cicadas, and they can drink their food as well by drinking the nectar out of plants, that is. Some other big orders include Neuroptera, which are our lace wings. If you look at the top, we call it a lace wing because you can see through the wing. Um, we have our coleoptera, which are our beetles. This is an aquatic beetle here that it actually can hold an air bubble around its abdomen and treat it like a scuba diving tank so they can actually breathe underwater. And then you have your lepidoptera, which are butterflies or moths. Diptera, which are our flies. And hymenoptera, which of course are our bees and wasps and ants. So those are the, some of the major groups of insects. Let me take another pause here.